Hi guys and welcome to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today at Drayton Park Golf Club. What we're going to be doing today is a review of Matt Kuchar's swing. So this is following the Open Championship 2017 where Matt was runner-up, played a very solid, very good final round. I've just filmed a video talking about the difference between a one-plane and a two-plane backswing and I thought it'd be quite fun to actually film one really on his swing and what he's trying to do in his method. So we're going to be starting with uh, an image, a video of his swing, a bit of a review of that before we come back here and really start to talk about his method, why it works for him and what you can learn from it. Stay tuned to find out more. So guys, here we have Matt Kuchar from downline position. Unfortunately, I haven't got any of my own images here of Matt's swing, so I've had to use uh, the GASP app here. And although the camera's nice and low, uh, it's not quite down line. I'd like it to be a little bit further to the left, almost uh, level with his hands. Um, so I think we're just slightly off here. Uh, I've just drawn on uh, top of the head, forehead, rear of backside to show any body movement. I think what you see with Matt, because of his very flat one plane swing, is his weight shifts a little bit into his heels uh, on the back swing. So I'm expecting to see his head move a little bit away from that front line. Uh, and there is a slight steepening on the downswing as a reaction to that. Uh, what I really want to discuss more today is how Matt really tries to bring his hands very tight, very inwards towards his trail thigh on the backswing. So his hands are going to be moving inwards towards his right leg, right thigh. Uh, but he really tries to keep the club face pointing at the target as long as possible. So he's trying to get the club to be pointing at the target as long as possible, almost a feeling of close back open through. It's more of a close back and held off through. This is also a slightly older swing. Um, so through impact, this isn't as good as it is right now. So I'm also going to bring up on screen while you're looking at this uh, as we go through the quick swing change that he's made with his coach in recent couple of years. Uh, it's not really the back swing change, it's more the through impact, the more exiting left, so you'll be able to see the difference between them. Let's just go into the back swing nice and slowly. So this first move, and I'm going to stop at first parallel around here. So what you'll see is his hands have really moved inwards towards his thigh and just as I suggested you can see that's meant his bum's moved a little bit back and his head's moved away from that front line as well as pressure is definitely shifting a little bit into heels but he's got that club pointing at the target for the most of the journey so we want the club face I like the club face to be at a similar angle to uh, your spine you can see that Matt's is slightly close to that uh, there's a lot of modern day swingers with more of a closed club face like a John Rahm or a Dustin Johnson. I'd much prefer to see that than the club face ever getting open. Let's just get rid of those couple of lines uh, I've just drawn so we haven't got too much on the screen. As you can see there's very much one plane swing and what we're meaning by that as I'll talk about in the rest of the video is that the lead arm is at sort of 90 degrees as you can pretty much see there uh, to the spine angle so his left arm his lead arm is much more across his chest underneath his shoulder uh, the other thing that Matt does quite nicely is his lead wrist matches to that so the the left wrist at the top of the back swing is pretty much the same angle as his lead arm it does steepen on the downswing you'll see and I think that's because the pressure shifts a little bit too much into Matt's heels, it steepens, but it only comes down on plane. So if it was slightly uh, behind him on the backswing, if you like, it is very much in front of him on the downswing and actually a very good delivery position. Uh, you'll see there's very little. I'm actually just going to get rid of some of these lines on the screen. Uh, but you can still see the club face is angled downwards and he tries to get it pointing down his target line as long as possible. The change in what you'll see come up on the screen here as well is that I think Matt in the modern day swing actually gets his hands exiting a little bit more to the left. So if I just draw one line on here, so the club shaft at a dress. Yep, 
he gets pretty close to that same position through impact. And what he gets with the modern swing is the club exiting more to the left. So more on that line, whereas you can see here, hands really disconnect a little bit away from the body. And there is club face closure, but it's actually happening well after impact. You can see the club was definitely pointing down target line. What he's getting with his modern swing is it points down target line longer uh, because the hands and arms are exiting more to the left. It's more connected in his new swing rather than this flip movement you can see here. So as shown in that video there of Matt Kuchar, we're looking at a technique very much his own, but definitely works for him. Not the longest hitter out there, but a guy you'd really put money on hitting the fairway, hitting the green if he needed to under pressure. He's very, he's a real money-making machine is he really works his hands and tries to keep his hands as close to his body as he can throughout the whole swing. So it's very much a body swing, no real disconnection with what the hands and arms are doing. And his approach with his coach is to try and actually keep the club pointing down the target line for longer. In a traditional swing with more rotation, we know that the club face is closing very quickly. Uh, that is a source of power. The toe of the golf club is moving quicker than the heel. And definitely if we actually flick our hands and really try and give it a, a good you know, trail hand hit, we are going to be able to generate some speed, what we call flash speed there. Matt is all about body rotation. He really has to use his body very well. And he tries to keep his lead arm on the backswing very close to his trail side, as close as he can on the backswing. And what he feels is the club is closed on the way back and opening almost on the way through. So it's getting closer to this style of action where the club is pointing down the target line for longer. He's trying to take the hands out of it and reduce club face closure through impact. So what you see with Matt there in that review I just showed is how close his hands stay to his trail thigh in the backswing and that club face is pointing more down to the ground, that trail, uh, sorry, that lead wrist, that logo on your glove pointing down towards the golf ball a little longer. Tries to really get this one plane backswing as I've discussed in a previous video with this lead arm much more across his chest. Tries to keep the club pointing down his target line as long as possible so he feels like his hands are moving to the left but he doesn't allow an aggressive rotation where the right arm is starting to pass the left so he's very much holding off the shot going as I said from a feeling of more of a closed to open position. It definitely works for him. He's a really straight hitter out there. He's not the longest, but he's long enough to compete on tour. I would say if you're going to give his technique a, a, a go, make sure you put in some practice time with it. Uh, but it's, it's very much something he does. He's worked on with his coach to try and gain a bit of consistency. And uh, God knows it's, it's definitely worked. So I'm going to try my best to go for one here. Really feeling this left arm very tight and this real exit left rotation on the way through as if I'm holding the club face open rather than using any real hand and arm action. You may have to forgive this shot, I definitely haven't practiced it. Let's give it a whirl. Well, I think that was a pretty good effort at it actually. It felt a little wooden, felt a little stiff. I was definitely too tight, too tense. When you're trying something new, I think you're going to get that approach. Uh, it worked very well with uh, a little tour stick exercise, actually doing a Matt Kuchar approach, where you're keeping the cane in contact with your lead side as long as possible on the backswing and really keeping it connected again on the way through to try and reduce club face closure. So I hope you enjoyed the content of that video. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up below. Do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't miss any of the videos coming every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.30. Love to get input from you guys. So any comments, questions, videos you'd like to see, get in touch below or on any of our social media platforms. All the info you need has come along the bottom of the screen for you. Thanks guys, we'll see you soon.